In a previous video, we assembled this circuit here, which is a class A transistor amplifier circuit. And in this video, we're just going to introduce some of the software and hardware that we're going to use to just view and measure some inputs and outputs for this circuit. So in this video, I'm actually going to be using uh, one of these, which is a, um, a USB oscilloscope um, called a PicoScope made by Pico technology and this is the i think it's the base uh simplest model the 2000 series it's a two channel oscilloscope and it also has a signal generator which is quite useful for our purposes as well and so i'm just going to explain how i'm going to connect this up but even if you're using a different type of oscilloscope or um whatever you, you should be able to sort of do the equivalent um if you're following along as well so um, before anything else, I've, I've taken it off for now, but we do have a power supply um, that should be connected to this circuit here that we talked about in the last video. It was a 9-volt battery, which is going to be connected to the top and bottom rails of that circuit, respectively. Um, I'm not too bothered about that for now. We'll connect it up um, with a battery just in a, in a second. But rather, what I want to talk about is how we're going to connect and measure some of the inputs and outputs to this circuit. So what we said was that the input was um, connected to this coupling capacitor here uh, on the left hand side and likewise the output we're taking is the um, right hand side of this coupling capacitor on the output there. Um, we talked about that a bit more with the schematic when we assembled the circuit to begin with. But we have our input and our output and this bottom rail here we're just classing this as, as ground or zero. So all of our measurements are going to be made with respect to that ground rail that runs along the bottom. So here I've got channel one, which is just a um, um, oscilloscope lead, um, which connects just using this kind of coaxial connection, which is a sort of twisting locking mechanism. So if you've not used one of these before, um, very simply, all we're doing is we are sort of connecting that so that the I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's a little groove there that runs along um, the little sort of raised point on the connection. It sort of sits in place like that and then twists to lock. And so that won't come out now. Um, that's locked in place. And the same for each of these. These two are oscilloscope leads uh, or oscilloscope probes, which look something like this. So we have our sort of test probe here with a retractable sort of spring-loaded hook there. And that means what we can do is we can hook it onto something and it'll sort of stay connected because of the tension in that spring. And so we're going to use this channel one. Um, you'll see that these ones are colour-coded yellow and red, actually. So it's, um, it corresponds with the, the yellow on here. This is our channel one or channel A. Um, we're going to connect that to the input. And... We're making that measurement with respect to ground or to zero. And so these probes have this sort of ground connection as well attached to them. And I'm just going to clip that onto any any of these components that are connected to that bottom rail. It doesn't really matter which. Um, but as long as I'm connecting to the, the negative side and it's connected to that bottom rail, um, then we're by de facto sort of connected to, to zero by, by virtue of doing that. Likewise, I want to do exactly the same for the output. And so the output, our score probe's fallen down here somewhere. Here we go. So the output, here's our red channel, channel B. And likewise, we're going to connect that to the output, which was the right-hand side of that capacitor. So we've got it to the left of the input and to the right of the capacitor, these sort of outermost connections. And again, that's with respect to ground. And so I'm just going to connect that to another one of those components at the bottom there. OK, so the last thing we're going to do just before we start looking at the software is we're going to take this signal generator here, which is another function of the PicoScope. We're going to talk about generating a signal um, in the software in just a second, but we'll connect it in place first of all. What I've got here is just a connection that takes us from this sort of coaxial um, connection here to two crocodile clips. Um, so that's just a lead you can you can buy um, for the purposes of setting up test signals like this. And again, that's going to go. These components are going to be doing some heavy lifting, really, because that is going to be connected to the input as well. 
and again relative to ground any of these components we're going to have that in place like that and so if i can lift this up without sort of dislodging anything we've got something that looks like this we've got our signal generator the red crocodile clip is connected to the input so is channel a oscilloscope and then channel b oscilloscope is connected to that output um, coupling capacitor as well everything else um, or all of these are measured with respect to ground so i've got those ground clips just sort of um, clustered around any of those components at the bottom there okay so now um, we can connect our battery and we can start taking some measurements i say that my battery clips popped out there so he can go back in um, the only other thing I'll mention about these score probes is these are examples of what are called 10 times probes. And often you can um, switch those on and off, but basically they attenuate the measurement by a factor of 10. And providing that the software or the hardware, if you're using a proper oscilloscope, knows about this, that's fine. Um, but there's a switch on here. We're going to use the 10 times function, so I'm just making sure that that's switched to 10 times, same on the other channel as well. We'll see that option in the software when we um, come to look at that in just a second. Okay, so with the battery in the circuit, um, I've opened up PicoScope 6 here, which is the current version of the software. And by default, nothing much is happening. So one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to set up um, the score probes. We were using two channels. Uh, channels A and B. Um, by default, channel A is on, it's set to auto, but channel B is off. I'm going to set that one to auto as well. And the second thing I want to do is they're both set a DC coupling by default. We're measuring AC signals. We're going to we're going to send an AC signal to the input of our transistor amplifier and measure the output. So both of these need to be set to AC. Okay. So the next thing is to actually set up that um, input signal with the signal generator that's built into the PicoScope. And to do that, we're gonna drop this down here. This is our signal generator sort of control menu. And I wanna send a sine wave. Um, everything else is pretty much arbitrary for our purposes. I just wanna sort of show you how to take some, some basic measurements of the input and the output. So one kilohertz at one volt, um, in fact, one volt is probably a bit too big for our purposes. Let's knock that right down to about 100 millivolts. And we'll switch that on. So we get a bit of a mess to begin with. What we're going to do is we're going to use this button here, which is this sort of lightning bolt symbol for auto setup. It has a bit of a think. And then we get our input and output waveforms um, sort of scaled a bit more suitably. Um, Another problem we've got here is it's sort of jumping around all over the place. This is kind of our real-time flow of measurements that the uh, scope is taking. Uh, to settle that down a bit, we're going to use a trigger and choose auto. Then what it's going to do is it's going to take a given sort of arbitrary point to use as a reference um, to give this sort of um, this uh, image a bit of stability. What we can also do, just to settle this down a bit further, is to press that stop button there, which sort of pauses the measurements being taken. Um, so we have something that's sort of um, static now. Um, one thing I've just remembered, actually, just looking at these measurements, is when we set up the connections for this uh, circuit, we set up 10 times probes. One thing I forgot, we need to set that up in the software as well, and we need to tell um, the software that the channel A and B are both 10 times probe. So if you just drop down by clicking on channel A there, we get some measurements here. Uh, the only one we're bothered about is this one here. We need to change that to times 10, to times 10 probe. And I'm going to do that the same for channel B as well. So now when I press play again, these results are going to increase in magnitude by a factor of 10. Um, so now we've got something that looks like this. Um, remembering that the left-hand scale is for channel A and the right-hand scale is for channel B. Okay, so with that being said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press stop again just to freeze that. I'm going to take some measurements um, in this software for um, the input and the output voltages that we're seeing here. You can read this from the scale that you can see, 
but most software, digital oscilloscope software, and even benchtop digital oscillos oscilloscopes are able to take measurements um, automatically. And so we're going to do that in this particular software here with the measurements button down at the bottom. And if you just click on add measurement, we can choose which channel we want to measure. We want to measure channel A. We're going to measure the AC, the RMS um, AC, uh, the root mean squared. And of what we're going to measure, we're going to measure the whole trace. In other words, it's going to take all of what we can see here into account when it comes up with that measurement to get a reasonably accurate measurement. So we press OK, we get this along the bottom here. We get channel A, AC RMS. It's got a value, a minimum, a maximum, and an average. Now, by default, uh, at the minute rather, they're all the same. And the reason is because we've paused the simulation. Um, if we press play again, you can see that these values are starting to vary as it sort of measures um, the highest and lowest values that it's coming across and working out the average of them, that kind of thing. But you can just press stop there. If they're flickering around, it sort of freezes them uh, to take some results. Likewise, I'm going to do the same thing for channel B. So uh, adding another measurement at the bottom here with the plus, I'm going to do the same thing, but for channel B, it's the ACRMS. Click OK, and we've got the... Um, results or the readings for channel B there as well. So notice that, if I just press play again here, because this is the RMS, it's not the peak of the waveform. It's roughly 0 0.707 of the peak is the RMS. So for instance here, looking at channel B, the peak is about 0 0.6 volts or 600 millivolts, whereas the measurement that we're getting is 532 millivolts, so it's roughly uh, 0 .0, 0 0.707 of the peak is the RMS. So just bear that in mind um, when you're looking at these, contrasting it with what you're actually seeing on the screen. But hopefully you found this video useful on how we can um, connect up a very simple Class A amplifier to um, a digital oscilloscope and observe and measure the input and output waveforms.